Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And for the first time in a while, this video is not about D&D. Well, kind of. Yeah, this video is going to be focusing on the new TTRPG Daggerheart that is currently being developed by Critical Role. And if you've been following along with the adventures of Daggerheart for a while now, this has actually been in the work for the last couple of months. And yes, right now, open testing for this game has started. We've been able to take a closer look at some of the rules and mechanics of the game, and I personally wanted to go over a lot of what I've been seeing here within the game, as well as some things just that I think are going on behind the curtain. And just in case you want to follow along with me or check any of this out for yourself, I left you a link where you can find, download, and try out the new playtest too. So first of all, the mechanics and what I think about them. Dagger Heart is a game that surprisingly doesn't actually run on a main D20 system. And well, it mostly does for the DM, but surprisingly not for the players. You see, within this game, you have your abilities run on two D12s, your Hope Die and your Fear Die. And then when you roll for a certain skill check, ability, attack, and the like, you roll both of these dies, your Duality Die, and you add the two of them together. However, whichever of them rolled higher provides a certain influence within the game. If your Hope Die rolled higher, then you rolled with Hope, which means you gain a Hope Point which can be used to fuel certain abilities. However, if your fear die rolled higher, it means that, well, if you still did beat the DC, it means you might have only succeeded a bit less than if it was with the hope die. And a lot of this interpretation really seems like it's gonna be up to your DM. It also means that the DM has then acquired a fear point, which are essentially in-game resources for the DM to use. And they can use these to activate certain abilities within their enemy characters, debuffs against the players, and the like. And besides this, there are actually a number of big pieces that set Daggerheart apart from other forms of TTRPGs. For example, the stress and hit point system. So within Daggerheart, hit points is noted down as something like tiers. If incoming damage is high enough that it hits within a certain threshold, then you take a certain amount of damage. Minor damage is a hit point, major damage is two hit points, and severe damage is three hit points. And it's interesting to me that the damage and hit points aren't directly related to one another. Like, typically, as we see within the official rules for, you know, this example character, if the incoming damage is 6, it would register as a minor damage, and therefore we would take 1 hit point. So our damage decides how many hit points we lose, but it's based on a scale rather than actually just saying you take 6 damage and then you cross off 6 damage on your sheet. And so this is kind of like the first time that I'm really seeing this within a TTRPG. And the interesting part, too, is looking at stress and essentially how hit points and damage also affect stress. So stress is something akin to a resource as well and you get stress each and every time you get hit with damage below your minor damage threshold. You can only have a certain amount of stress stored up within you and if you have too much stress you take damage. You know, kind of like real life. But now I really want to take a step over to the character building kind of things. We have a decent chunk of options for fun builds, ancestries, classes, subclasses, domains, and communities, and yes, that is quite a lot. And also, this is a particularly fun part for me, because if you're new to the channel and don't know, I love making D&D builds in particular. I also do a lot of other stuff on the channel too, such as the occasional spell, lore, or monster guide, but builds are usually the bread and butter here. So if this seems like something you'd be interested in, or if you like my art that you're watching me draw as I make this video review, or even just, you know, what you've seen so far, or want me to cover more Dagger Heart content, then consider subscribing for even more. But anyways, back to the nitty gritty of the video. We have a lot of character pieces to work with here, and for the sake and convenience of time, I will shorten and summarize all of these as quickly as I can. So, starting with Ancestry. Ancestry is basically your race slash lineage stuff, and we have quite a fun pool to work with, including your garden variety Tolkien stuff, such as, you know, human, elf, halfling, dwarf, orc, goblin. But then we also get into some of the other kind of spicier stuff. To be quite frank here, a lot of these are races that you'd find, or, you know, things that look like they'd carry over from D&D books. You've got things like Dragonborn, Tiefling, Satyrs. But in this case, it's Dracona, Daemon, Fawn. So just keep these sorts of things in mind that... There are quite a number of ancestral options right now in the game, and they're probably working on more as we speak. You know, also in addition to like just, you know, balancing the game and making sure that this game is playable. 
So of course, each ancestry has their own unique abilities and powers, and looking at the concept art for these characters, there is so much flexibility in design and personability, and honestly, I think that's a huge win for Daggerheart. You look at a lot of like the different options in regards to ancestry, and it can really open up the floodgates for just inspiration. Like for example, when I was going through the different test material, and I was looking through you know different rules and concepts, and I came across some of the art, essentially the fairies, I saw these large beetle people, and just all these kind of like insectoid people as these fairies. And of course you can have it more of you know like a fairy godmother vibe, but needless to say, I was a little inspired too, hence why I'm drawing this big, round, beetle boy. And in this case, yeah, this is actually a fairy. So, once again, big win for creativity here. I love to see it. Anyways, getting more so back on track, communities are where your character originated from. On the surface, they remind me a lot of backgrounds. Each one grants unique buff, and I do feel like they're much more clearly defined than a lot of the backgrounds currently in D&D and how they benefit your character. Some refer to gaining buffs and abilities when interacting with certain kinds of NPCs, whereas others are all about focusing on more mechanical things like increasing your armor or even some of your skills. And now, classes. There are nine main classes within Daggerheart at the moment. Bard, Druid, Guardian, Ranger, Rogue, Seraph, Sorcerer, Warrior, and Wizard. And now each class gets their own choice of subclass, and it's within the class we actually see which domain cards we can choose from as we level up. More about that in a second. A majority of the classes will have a unique combo of domains that lets you add a certain blend of abilities to really make the character fit into a certain playstyle. And now, speaking of domains, these are sort of the overall theme of some of your characters. Some of them grant you abilities that aid you in battle, while others might give you healing powers while others might give you magical secrets and cleverness to trick your enemies with. When you choose a domain, you get a few of these domain cards, and as you progress and level up throughout the game, you'll acquire more domain cards for you to use. And at first glance, they do remind me a lot of like feats and spells based on how you get them by leveling up, because as you progress further and further, you get to unlock more and more of these abilities. You know, kinda like feats. And now, looking at a majority of the basics within this game so far, my honest thoughts. I already have some big points that I want to add. First of all, big love for the most underutilized die in all of tabletops. Hail to the D12. Finally, it could be this thing's time to shine. But also, I both feel like I'm pumped for, but also feeling iffy about the whole mechanic. Already for new players to the TTRPG scene, it feels like it could be a lot to track. You need to be mindful about tracking a lot of resources too, which I'm kind of getting with Dagger Heart. And what does what, and how much of each sort of resource you have. You've got hope, stress, hit points, armor, just general equipment. It's a lot of certain things that it might come out a little bit better more in long-term testing. But on the surface right now, it does seem like it is a little chunky. And also, that's kind of the whole point of why we're here. The game is currently being tested to work out all of the bugs, and at this point, if there's something in there that really doesn't play well, you at this stage have the ability to say something about it. It's a speak now or forever hold your peace kind of thing. I personally am very excited for this. I'm going to try to work on getting an even better understanding of the game, and personally, I invite you to try it out and see for yourself how the game runs, and, you know, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But if you feel like it is for you, but it maybe just doesn't flow 100%, then tell people about it. Let them know how you're feeling. They're listening to what we're saying. This is the time where if we have any big critiques about the game, we can actually work with them and maybe make something even greater. But moving on, getting into a more serious note of the video, I really wanted to talk about what's going on behind the curtain of Daggerheart as well as D&D as a whole. And now if you don't know, some people have been saying that this is the game that will kill D&D. You know, other than, you know, the game that killed D&D, which has basically just been D&D itself in this last year. There's a lot of blood in the water at Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast when it comes to D&D and some of their business decisions. Which sucks, because for a while, this was honestly a game that could do no wrong. 
it had the backing of everyone and their dog. It had every kind of TV show referencing D&D whenever any sort of topic of TTRPGs came up. And for a while, TTRPGs and D&D were essentially synonymous with each other. However, as recent events have shown us, the game is on somewhat of a decline. And personally, I think Daggerheart isn't exactly something that will kill D&D, but I do think it will take a lot of D&D's monopolizing chokehold off the TTRPG community. And honestly, whether or not this is intended, I personally think it is. And if you don't believe me, then take a look for yourself. Half the reason that D&D got so big in the first place was because of Critical Role. With Daggerheart in the works, they'll likely be playing their TTRPG in new episodes of Critical Role. And if you really think that I'm wearing a tinfoil hat right now, look at a lot of the evidence we already see. In Exandria, you already have a lot of the same ancestries that you see in Daggerheart. I don't think that's a coincidence. In addition, you already have content showing Matt and the crew building characters. Hell, we even got a video of Matt and Travis working to make and build Bertrand Bell into Daggerheart, a character that previously was in a D&D campaign. Now they're showing, hey, let's build this character into Daggerheart, showing that maybe that shift isn't going to be as hard as we thought. And honestly, too, I really do think that they're going to be putting a lot more emphasis on Daggerheart with their next season of Critical Role. And, you know, maybe they're not essentially aiming to kill D&D, but I do think that they're going to be aiming to play it at least a little bit less on their streams. And of course, a lot of this is just speculation. Only time will tell. And I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. But my personal thoughts, I feel like Daggerheart has a potential to be huge, just due to the massive audience Critical Role has. We've already seen some of the crazy stuff they've been able to create just because of the love and support of their fans. And personally, I am so excited for this. I love D&D, don't get me wrong, but honestly, it's about time that some other TTRPGs came in and took the spotlight for a bit, or even just for a while. Or even too, we just give some of that love for D&D and just kind of spread it out a little more evenly amongst the crowd. And maybe Daggerheart's gonna start facilitating that. But anyways though, that's just my two cents on all this. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then please like and subscribe for even more potentially Daggerheart content. And honestly, too, if you really did like this and want to see more Daggerheart, like really, really want to see more, let me know in the comments below. I've already been cooking up some fun builds that I'd love to show off if you guys are interested, but of course, you have to let me know. But in the meantime, keep smiling, keep scheming, and I'll see all of you next time.